Hello everyone, it's Joe from OnePageZen.com and today in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily migrate a full WordPress website to Amazon's AWS cloud platform. Now this tutorial is broken down into three steps. So in step one, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on an Amazon AWS EC2 virtual machine. Then in step two, I'm going to show you how to transfer your domain name to your new WordPress virtual machine on AWS. And then lastly, in step three, I'm gonna show you how to migrate your existing WordPress database to your new WordPress installation on Amazon AWS. Now, the first thing you have to do before getting started with the tutorial is to create an AWS account. After you've done that, Go to your AWS dashboard and click on the EC2 link under the compute column. All right, now we are going to click the launch instance button here. And let's go to the AWS marketplace and let's search for WordPress and click on the WordPress certified by Bitnami. We'll select that. Click continue. And in this case, we're going to use the T2 micro machine because that is uh, included in the free tier. So next we're going to configure instance details and under the auto assign public IP, we are going to choose enable. And then let's go to the review and launch. And lastly, we are going to click the launch button to deploy our instance. And the last thing we need to do here is we need to uh, create an SSH key pair. So I already have a SSH key pair created. However, I'm going to create a new one uh, just for this example, new SSH key, and then click on the download key pair button. Now we're gonna use this SSH key pair later on in a tutorial where I'll show you how to uh, SSH into your AWS instance. So save this key in uh, a safe place. And finally click the launch instance button. All right, the next thing we have to do is we have to obtain our WordPress credentials. So you will need these credentials in order to log into WordPress. So to find those, we're gonna to go to services, then to EC2. And then in the sidebar column here, click on instances. Now from your instance page, what you're going to do is right click on your instance, go to instance settings, and then to get system log, then scroll towards the bottom of your system log, and copy your application password, which you'll find in a, in a box towards the bottom of the page. And then paste this password in a safe location. So I'm just gonna paste it into a notepad file. And I'm gonna close this window. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my website's external IP address. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to open a new browser window and I'm going to paste that IP address. And now you can see here, um, my, here's my WordPress website that I just deployed. So I can add slash WP admin at the end to open the login page. Now the username is going to be user and our password is going to be the password that we just copied from the system log. So I'm going to paste that and then click the login button. And there you go. You've just successfully installed WordPress on an Amazon AWS EC2 instance. All right, so now that we've installed WordPress, the next thing we have to do is we have to transfer our domain name so that it points to our new WordPress installation on AWS. So the first step in this tutorial is to head on over to your AWS dashboard and under the compute column, click on EC2. Now in the left hand column, uh, click on your instances 
and use the bottom scroll bar to scroll to the right and copy your instance's public IP address. So copy that. And I'm just going to paste it in Notepad here because we're going to use it later. All right, so now that we've copied our external IP address, the next thing we have to do is we have to open the Route 53 service, which is the AWS DNS service. So uh, visit this link, console.aws.amazon.com slash route 53. And once you're there, you're going to go to DNS management and click the get started now button. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a hosted zone that will manage our DNS records. So click the create zone link at the top of the page and then click create zone again. Now for my domain name, I'm going to be using onepagezen.com and it's going to be a public hosted zone. So click the create button. Now remember, use your own domain name. Don't use uh, onepagezen.com. All right, now we need to create a couple of records. So at the top of the page, click the create record set. All right, now the first record we're going to create is an A record. And we're going to leave the name field blank. And under alias, we're gonna keep the no button checked. And the value is going to be our external IP address that we copied earlier in this tutorial. So I'm going to copy it from Notepad and I'm going to paste that into the value field and then click the Create button. Now we have to create another record and this is going to be a CNAME record and in the name field, we're going to enter www. And the value is going to be onepagezen.com. And then we're going to click the Create button again. Now, if you did everything properly, you should have uh, four record sets here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go to our domain name provider and configure our DNS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my domain name provider, which is Namecheap. You can use whoever you want. Uh, the process will be the same. And as you can see here, it's my domain onepagezen.com. So I'm going to scroll down and under the name servers section, I'm going to choose custom DNS. And I'm going to go back to my to my Route 53 settings here. And these are my four name servers. So I'm going to need to copy each one of these. And you're going to paste these in the custom DNS field. Now don't include the uh, period at the end of each name server. All right, and once you've entered all of your name servers, click on the Save button. And now you'll probably have to wait up to uh, maybe five minutes or so for your uh, name server changes to take effect. So now that you've changed your name servers, the next thing you should do is check to make sure that the changes have taken effect. So open a new browser tab and enter your domain name. Press enter. And you can see here that my domain name is successfully linking to my WordPress website on AWS. Now, unfortunately, the tutorial isn't over yet. And the reason is because as you will see here, 
If we enter our domain name without the www dot in front, it also loads our website. So this means that our website is being served with two different versions, the one with www dot and the one without. So what we need to do is we need to configure our server to only serve our preferred version of the site, whether that is with or without the www dot in front. So to do that, we are going to have to SSH into our AWS instance. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial, but if you click the link in the description of this video, it will show you how to uh, set up an SSH connection with your AWS instance. All right, so after you have uh, established an SSH connection with your instance, you will see a window just like this. And the first thing we have to do is we have to open up our server's configuration file. So I'm just going to paste the path to that file, press enter. And here under the document root, I'm going to add a few lines of code. And what this code is going to do is it's going to tell our server to only serve the www dot version of our website. So I am pasting that in there. And now you can enter um, control X and Y and then press enter and that will save the file. And the last thing you need to do is you need to restart your Apache server. So to do that, you're going to enter the following command and press enter. And now uh, each of these commands, you can find them on this tutorials page at onepagezen.com. I've included a link to that tutorial in the description to this video. So now let's test out our website. So if we go press enter again, what we see here is our server is automatically serving the website with www dot in front, even if we try to access the website without it. All right, so now that you've successfully transferred your domain name to point to your new WordPress installation on AWS, the next thing you have to do is to migrate your existing WordPress database to your new WordPress installation on AWS. So let's get started. So in this example, I'm gonna be transferring my existing WordPress website at onepagezen.org to my brand new WordPress website at onepagezen.com. So the first step in this tutorial is to head on over to your existing WordPress website and go to your dashboard. Then go to your plugins and go to add new. And the plugin we're going to be using is called All-in-One WordPress Migration. So once you found that plugin, click on Install Now. And then click on Activate. Now in the left sidebar column, scroll over the plugin and go to the Export link. All right, now we're going to add a couple conditions here. So we're going to enter our existing uh, WordPress URL in the find field. So one page zen.org. And we need to replace that with one page zen.com because this is the destination for the WordPress website. So once you've done that, click on the export to link and then click on file. All right, then click the download button. All right, now while our file is downloading, what we're going to do is we're gonna head on over to the new host where we're transferring our website to. So I'm going over to my new WordPress website at onepagezen.com. I'm gonna to go to my dashboard and to plugins and add new. And I'm going to install the same plugin. Uh, 
So I'm going to click Install Now and Activate. All right, now in the left sidebar column, I'm going to go to Import. All right, so once the file has finished downloading, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Import From link here, and we're going to choose File, and then locate the file that you just downloaded. So locate this file and click on Open. And now it's going to be importing the website. Now this typically takes a couple of minutes. Now I should also mention that if your website file is over 512 megabytes, you will have to make an adjustment to one of the plugin files in order to increase the allowed upload file size. So I will show you how to do that in a different tutorial. If you're interested, the link to that tutorial is in the description to this video. All right, so once you see this import process message pop up, just click on the proceed button. All right, so our data has been imported successfully and we're good to go. So now that you've imported your new website, there is a chance that you might have to log in to your site again. And the password that you're going to use is the existing password from your old website. So remember that if you are prompted to log in again, you have to use the password from your old website. So if you click on your home page, you will see that your website was imported successfully. And the next, next thing you have to do, or the last thing you have to do, is go to your settings and just look over your uh, permalinks. So let's see, let's go to our permalinks here and make sure that uh, post name is selected. This is generally considered the best practice for your website's SEO. So we'll click on Save Changes. And there you go, you've successfully imported a WordPress website to your new hosting provider. All right, well, that's it for this tutorial. Your WordPress website has now been successfully migrated to Amazon Web Services. All right, now, if you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please leave them in the box below. Also, don't forget to check out the deluxe version of this tutorial available at onepagezen.com. There is a link to that tutorial in the description to this video. Also, don't forget to check out my social media channels and check out the other great cloud computing tutorials available at onepagezen.com. Thanks a lot for watching.